Hello, my name is Hans George Campbell, and welcome to another Commodore pickup video. Today, I'm going to show you this Commodore 128 system that I recently purchased from my local Craigslist. So let's get started. Yeah, I recently uh, purchased this from Craigslist, my local Craigslist. Um, one of the things that I do when I get up in the morning, and I do this just about every every day, is while I'm having my first cup of coffee, after I've had my breakfast, you know, uh, I turn on my main computer, Ruby, and I check my eBay listings, see what's sold, you know. I check my YouTube channel to see if there's any new comments or whatever, you know, any new subscribers or whatever's going on on there. And then I log on to my local Craigslist around the Portland, Oregon area. And sometimes I also check the Seattle, Tacoma, Washington area too to see if anyone has posted any ads on Amiga, Commodore, Atari, Classic PCs, Macintosh, Apple, you know, uh, vintage computer stuff. You know, I'm always searching for vintage computer stuff. And so, I, um, one morning I, I, I came across an ad where the, where the woman, her name is Robin, um, she had all of this Commodore 128 stuff posted on Craigslist and uh, she's very close to where I live so she, you know I think about 10 minutes away 15 minutes away you know it's not that far from me but um, she had all the stuff listed for about six, I think it was $600 and I know that we're going through some hard times right now with the COVID-19 virus stuff that's going on and a lot of people are out of work and they're hurting for money you know, so I thought, well, I think I'll make her an offer, a cash offer of $300. So that's what I did. I emailed her, but, you know, I emailed her and I said, look, if you're willing to bring all of your Commodore 128, well, your Commodore computer stuff to my shop in Beaverton, and I'm very close to where you're, where you're at, um, I would be willing to pay you $300 cash for everything. Now there's more stuff behind me. I'll show you in, in just a moment. There's more stuff behind me that's part of this this lot. And so I didn't hear back from her for about I'd say about two or three weeks. About, about two weeks. A little over two weeks. And then yesterday I got a, a phone call from her in the morning time um, asking me if I was still interested in buying the Commodore stuff from her. I said, sure, bring it over to my shop today. I'll be in the shop all day today uh, doing some work out here and, you know, just you can drop by anytime you want. Uh, she, so she said, okay. And so she brought this stuff out, I think it was later on that afternoon, like around, it was like around 3.30 when she dropped by, you know, and her husband was with her, you know. And, um, now, the pictures were very crappy pictures. I mean, they were not really good pictures. I couldn't really see everything that was in there. And the main thing I was after, the main thing I was after when I saw it in the picture, and it's the main reason why I was willing to pay 300 bucks for the whole lot, was this rare 1581 disk drive. These are very hard to come by today. In fact, the average sold price, sold price on eBay, because I, I, I did a search on these right after I bought this lot and Robin and her husband took off. I went, you know, logged on, on my Cuda Ruby, got on the eBay, and I did an advanced search to look up how much these drives sold for on eBay. And in this condition, no box, but with power supply, fully working, 
they're averaging $500 on eBay. That's sold price, not list price. That's what they have sold for. And even ones that are untested, sold for parts, you know, they're averaging between $250 and $350. Oh, yeah, these drives are highly sought after. By me including, I mean, I wanted a second drive, a second 1581 disk drive. Because I have one of these drives in like new condition in its original box that I have shown in a previous uh, Commodore pickup video. And I show that drive. Uh, that drive I have displayed in my computer room. And I don't want to use that drive. I want to keep it in like new condition in its original box. Okay. So I was looking for uh, a second 1581 disk drive that I could actually use, you know, so I'm real happy to get this drive. And that was the whole, the main reason why I was willing to purchase this whole lot from Robin was to get this 1581 disk drive because he was so damn hard to find, you know. But I did an advanced search to see, to get a general idea of, about how much all of this stuff is, is worth today current eBay value sold how much this stuff has sold for on eBay and we're looking at around three times what I paid for everything around nine hundred dollars because the Commodore 128 computer in that condition but working with power supply in fact even without power supply these things are going for around um, 240 bucks easily for that price I've seen a lot of them sell for that around 240 to, to around 300 bucks but with power supply because the power supply by itself for the Commodore 128 usually goes for between 60 and 80 dollars the same thing with the power supply for the 1581 disk drive those usually go for around 60 bucks and the computer working like this with power supply you know the Commodore 128 computers like that even though it's missing a, a key and it's the keyboard is yellowed um, they're averaging between three and four hundred dollars. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So yeah, this stuff is probably worth at least nine hundred to a thousand dollars for all of this stuff that you see here, and the stuff behind me that I'm going to show you. So I got a good deal. I paid three hundred dollars for everything, and I consider that a very good deal because it included. Now these cartridges, I didn't see these cartridges. And some of this, and like this box software, I didn't see any of this in the pictures. So I was pleasantly surprised, when, and the joystick here, I was pleasantly surprised to see all this included in, in the, the tote, you know, this big old tote that this stuff came in, you know. Because this is the final cartridge, and this is the hard to find gateway to Abshai cartridge. I always want to play the cartridge version of this game on my Commodore 64 computer and I'm going to show that in a future video. I'll show me playing this this game. And then of course Centipede, that's a lot of people's favorite, you know, one of their favorite games, you know, including my, my friend uh, who lives out in Southeast Portland. Uh, that's his favorite game, so yeah. And then I got uh, the music machine. Well, I'll show all this in a moment and close up and everything, you know. But I got the 1571 disk drive. It works. And none of this, none of the drives are yellowed, and they all work. The 1541 disk drive with the Neutronics mechanism, it works, you know, and it's a really nice shape. Um, and then I've, I got a bunch of discs. They're mostly copies, but I got a few originals, and I'll show that in a moment. But yeah, so now I'm going to show you uh, what I got, you know, a little bit closer up to the camera. I'll show you everything. So. That's what we're going to do next. All right. First up is this Commodore 128 personal computer. Um, it's, the case itself is not yellowed, but the keyboard is definitely yellowed, and it's missing one of the keys. One of the keys broke off. But uh, other than that, it does work. It does work. And the case is not yellowed. And this badge right here looks really nice. Uh, these keys aren't yellowed. 
So it's just a matter of maybe retro brighting these. And I think this computer will look very nice. You know, I really do. I think this computer will look very nice when it's uh, cleaned up and refurbished. Um, yeah. Then there's the, the back of the computer. As you can see, the feet are pretty good. They're not badly worn or anything like that. And then there's the the back of the computer, you know. So, yeah, it's not in that bad a shape. It just needs to be refurbished, cleaned up, keyboard retro -brighted. You know, fix this broken key right here, you know. I'm probably going to wind up just selling this computer because I don't keep computers that are yellowed. I don't like retro -bright or anything like that. I prefer just to continue looking for a Commodore 128 computer in mint condition in this original box. That's what I'm actually looking for. So I'll probably wind up selling this one on eBay for $340. Um, the $40 bucks is more than enough to cover the eBay and the PayPal fees. So that will leave me with the $300 bucks that I paid for the whole lot. So this way I get my money back. And then everything else will be free and clear profit. That's usually how I like to do my deals. When I look at a deal, when I, when I look at something on, on Craigslist, that's how I judge it as far as how I'm going to price it, what, you know, what I'm going to offer for it. I look at the whole thing, and then I see, okay, if I offer this person this amount of money, what can I sell to get that money back? Because that's the first thing I do. I get my money back that I paid for everything. This way, everything else that I keep or sell, if I decide to sell some of it, that's all free and clear profit. So that's probably what I'm going to do. I'm going to sell this computer for $340. Now, I'll sell it for $300 locally. So if you're near the Beaverton, Oregon area, you know, and you want this computer, I'm willing to sell it to you for $300. So you can save on shipping, and you, you can save on the additional 40 bucks. you know. So, yeah, you save some money. You can buy it from me locally. I'm selling it for $300 with the power supply. Okay? So, yeah. Oh, that's the other thing. I'm going to sell just the computer for $340. Oh, yeah. They have went for that much money on, on eBay, just the computer in this condition. So, and the power supply... I'm probably going to keep it because I do have a Commodore 128 computer in, in nice condition. And I like having spare power supplies. But if I wanted to, I could sell that power supply for about $80. I would probably wind up selling If I did sell it on eBay, I'd sell it for $129.95, and I would get it. I, I would actually get that much for that power supply because it's in really nice shape. So, yeah. But anyway, there's the Commodore 128 computer. Um, I'm just going to put it up here for now. And okay. This here is the power supply for it. I didn't get a chance to to clean it up, but yeah, that's the power supply for it. And as you can see, it's one of the type that has a fuse. This is a very nice power supply. And you can open it. So this one is serviceable and you can recap it. That's one of the reasons why these power supplies are so desirable and they sell for so, so much money on, on eBay because it's actually a very nice power supply. Yeah. Okay, so there's the power supply for that computer. And I'll put it over here with the computer. Okay, that's that's good. Keep it there. All right. The next thing that I want to show you is I got the 1571 disk drive. It's in pretty nice shape. Now I will hang on to this because I, I like using these even with my standard like 64C computer. You know. Um, I like the fact that these are double-sided disk drives, and they're very fast. These are very well-made drives. I just love these drives. Yeah, yeah. These drives, just the drive alone, 
I saw a few of them sell on eBay for around $245 just for the drive, you know, that works. No power cord or anything else, just the drive itself, no box or anything. $140, excuse me, $245 for one of these drives in this condition that works. That's how much they're going for on eBay right about now. But like I said, I'm planning on keeping this drive. As you can see, uh, the feet are in pretty nice condition. You know, the whole drive in general is in really nice shape, you know. So, yeah. Yeah, it's a nice shape. I haven't even cleaned this up yet, and you can see how nice it is. It's still in really nice condition, you know. But, yeah, that's the drive. Okay, next, I'm going to show the 1581, 1581 disk drive. Uh, this is the main reason why I bought this whole lot. In fact, this was the thing that caught my eye, was this 1581 disk drive. These are very hard to find today. Yeah, very hard to find. And <laughs> anytime I see one of these drives, I snatch it up. I snatch them up anytime I see them. They're really nice drives. They use the same mechanism as the Amiga computer drives. You know, the, the Amiga disk drives. I, I believe it's the same mechanism. You can use the same mechanism. And then there's the bottom of the drive. Right there. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, I think I want to put this here and I also picked up a uh, these are my favorite 1541 disk drives the ones with the Neutronic mechanism not the ALPS mechanism uh, these drives really ever go out of alignment I mean you really gotta put a lot of wear and tear on these drives before they start going out of alignment but that drives in really nice shape and uh, yeah I think it's, it's pretty nice now, keep in mind, I haven't cleaned these drives yet. They're just like I got them yesterday. You know, they're just like I got them. They're, they're still, you know, they're not clean yet. And there's the bottom of the drive. Now, on these drives, usually these are busted or cracked because people put too much pressure. They, they press on them too much and they break these. But as you can see, these this is not broken or cracked. It's in pretty nice shape. You know, so I was really happy. And then this label is usually scratched it right here on the aluminum. It's usually scratched right there. But this one's in pretty nice shape. So, yeah, I'm real happy about that. Yeah. I'll be hanging on to this drive. I'll be hanging on to that drive. Alrighty. And I also got this really nice... Epix 500XJ joystick. I haven't cleaned it up yet, but these are pretty nice joysticks because they're ergonomic. I mean, they, they fit your hand, you know, really nicely. And they got this one definitely needs cleaning. The micro, there's something wrong here. The micro switches or something's in there, so it needs cleaning. In fact, I'll probably just wind up adding brand new micro switches because I have Cherry micro switches that I use in my arcade business. I have brand new Cherry uh, micro switches. So I'll remove these switches and I'll install all high quality, you know, German engineered Cherry uh, micro switches. So, yeah. And then this joystick could be as, yeah, it'll be as good as new. But yeah, there's the Epix. Epix, what is it? The 500X XJ joystick, you know. So you got your typical uh, Tari 9 pin D connector on it. So, yeah, there's that. All right. So, next, I want to show you the cartridges that I got. Um, I didn't have this particular version of the I think it's the final cartridge. Um, 
Yeah, I think this is an early version because it just says the Final Crisis. It doesn't say Final Crisis 3 because I have the later one. But yeah, there's the Final Crisis. looks like brand new. I mean, look at it. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. I, I just love this blue case. I just love that blue case. It's just so cool looking. So I'm, I'm real happy that I got that Final Cartridge. And of course I got Centipede. A lot of people like Centipede, including my, my friend who lives out over in Southeast Portland. He loves this game. Yeah, he loves this game. Centipede. And of course I've got uh, Gateway to Apshai by Epics. I definitely want to play this game on my Commodore 64 computer. And this is a hard to find game. It's also in disc format in a, in a box. But I think the cartridge version is rarer than the disc version. And so I was really happy when I saw this in the tote, you know, because I didn't I didn't have this game in a cartridge format, so now I do. You know. Um I also have the music machine in its original box, and it is complete. It has the cartridge inside and the manual. I like getting software in the original boxes like this, even cartridges. I love getting these original boxes. That's so cool, so nostalgic, you know. But, yeah. I don't know how well you can read that or see that, but, yeah. I think it's, it's pretty cool. Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking it's pretty cool. And then I got this game. This is, uh, I think it's a disc-based game. Uh, the box is crushed, but it's still sealed. It's still shrink-wrapped. So I'm pretty sure that the disc inside and the manual is in pretty good shape. But it's a shame that the box was crushed. It's a rotten shame because, man, it's hard to find Commodore 64 games like this in the original box still sealed. You know, and because the box is crushed like this, I'll probably just wind up selling this on eBay. You know, I'll put it up for like 40 bucks and, and that'll be it. You know, sell it on eBay for like 40 bucks. I'll, I'll dust it off first, make sure it's nice and clean, and, and I'll let people know. I'll take really good pictures of the box, all six sides, so people can see the condition by the pictures. You know, because you can remove the shrink wrap. You can take the disc and the manual out, and you can actually iron the box back in the shape. And I, I suspect that whoever buys this from me on eBay, that that's exactly what they're going to do. So, yeah, there's that. And then I got this Parker, Parker Brothers uh, Q-Bert. This is a cartridge with a manual in its original box. I mean, the box is a little crushed, but... It'll display well, and it'll, I'll be able to slide it in with the rest of my boxed Commodore 64 software. So I always like getting software in the original boxes. I just love getting this software in the original boxes. Yeah, this one I'll keep. I'll keep this one. Even though the box is a little, um, it looks like it's faded because of excessive light or something, you know. It's still in good shape, you know, pretty good shape, so. I'll hang on to it. I'll hang on to this game. And then I got... Um, I got Zaxxon. But this is for the ColecoVision. It is, it's a uh, cartridge with the manual inside the box. But it's for the ColecoVision. So how did this wind up with the Commodore, you know, this Commodore 64 a lot, you know? So I'm going to sell this on eBay. I'll just sell this. Because I don't have a ColecoVision. ColecoVision. I don't want a ColecoVision. But there's the back of the box. And, uh, yeah, the box appears to be in pretty nice shape. For those people that are into the ColecoVision, they'll probably wind up buying this, you know. But, yeah, I'll, sell, I'll put this up for sale. Okay, and then 
I got um, some discs. I got this one here. I like getting original discs for the Commodore 64 computer. I like getting original discs. Just love getting original discs like this. Okay. And I got this one. This is probably one of those games that you pick up for like, I don't know, 10 bucks or whatever. You know. Yeah, I got that game. Right there. And, okay, most of the software that I'm going to show you in this, this crate are copies. But, there is a copy of one of my favorite Commodore 64 games, and that's Questron. So when I saw that, I quickly, you know, took that out. Because Questron is one of my all-time favorite games. This is a must-have for the Commodore 64. This game is a lot of fun to play. Oh, yeah. I also have the original disc and a manual, and I think it's the player reference card or whatever, that I showed in a previous uh, video. But now I got another copy of it, so I'm hoping this copy works because I want to play you know, the copy of it. But, yeah, this is the copy right there. And then, finally, what I got in this lot... Um, of course, I got the, uh, the cords, okay, these cords here, the disk drive cords, okay, I got those. But finally, in this lot, I got this big crate uh, full of Commodore 64 software in the original... Oh, well, not original, but, you know, all of these copies of Commodore 64 software. This is all copies. I don't think there's any more originals in here, because I think I, I checked yesterday. Because I'm always after the original discs. But I don't mind getting copies, because you never know what's on these discs. It might be some rare, hard-to-find utilities or demos, you know, or whatever. Or, you know, there might be, like... You know, Black Man, like, I'm still looking for the game Black Man for the Commodore 64. That's the rarest Commodore 64 game. Oh, yeah, if you ever find that game, that's worth a lot of money. And it's a shareware game. It was never, I don't think it was ever released commercially. It's a shareware game. Um, it's the rarest shareware game and the most valuable. And the, and the name of the game is called Black Man. Not Pac-Man. Black Man. And, yeah, if you ever find that Commodore 64 game, oh, yeah, you've got a rare game. I've been looking for that game for years. Ever since I saw it, way back in the early 80s, that was the last time I saw that game. And I've been looking for it ever since. You had to have my own copy of it, and I can't find that damn game. Can't. <laughs> so whenever I get Commodore 64 just like this, you know, copies, that's one of the first things I'll look for. Does he have Black Man in there? You know. <laughs> well, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I don't always show pickup videos, you know, like, like when I get pickups, because I get stuff all the time. Uh, I get stuff at least on a monthly basis, new vintage computer stuff every month. Sometimes I get it on a weekly basis because I get stuff from all over the United States that ship to me. I usually pay them with PayPal and I pay for the shipping, you know, and I get stuff shipped here all the time. So I get vintage computer stuff all the time, at least on a minimum, on a monthly basis. But sometimes I get vintage computer stuff on a weekly basis. And so, if I was to show all these pickups, you know, I mean, I'd have, <laughs> most of my videos on my YouTube channel would be pickup videos. Literally, seriously. That's how much vintage computer stuff I get, you know. But I thought I'd show this one, because I haven't shown a pickup video in a while, you know. And I know a lot of you are into the Commodore 128 and the Commodore computer stuff, so I thought, well, okay. 
uh, it's, it's about time I do another pickup video, you know, so that's what I'm doing here today. Um, I've got a lot of videos coming up, a lot of videos coming up, which will be posted soon on this channel, including the, the first three uh, Bridgeboard series videos. Um, I've got part two, which is finished, it's ready to upload. I've got part two of my Commodore Amiga 2000 HD repair and refurbishment series of videos coming up. Uh, that'll be coming up, I'll probably be posting those within the next two or three days. And, um, oh yeah. And uh, I'm going to do a... Um, a video called What's Inside the Commodore 1581 Disk Drive. You know, and that's going to be posted real soon. I'm actually going to show the inside. And we'll do an in-depth review of, of, of the 15, 1581 disk drive. And I'll show what's inside the drive and, and uh, everything, you know. And I'll probably go ahead and recap it under the camera and stuff like that. So, yeah. I've also got a couple of... Um, Macintosh SE computers, which I have to open up, make sure the batteries haven't exploded on them. I got to remove those batteries, and I'll probably go ahead and recap them because they're they're through hole technology, so the capacitors are electrolytics. They're through holes. I'll do that under the camera. So that's coming up. Um, um, I got part two of that HDMI board that I bought for my Amiga 2000 computer. I got part two of that coming up where I show how I plug that into the computer and you get to uh, come see my computer room, you know, the, the Amiga 2000 set up my computer room and uh, I show you the new, um, uh, the brand new 32 inch Samsung HDTV that I bought specifically for that computer. And we'll go through the menu system. I'll show you all the different menu options and how to configure everything. And so stay tuned for part two of that, of that video series. And God, I got so many videos in the works. I really do. I mean, a lot of videos. I got at least 50 to 100 more videos scheduled just for this year alone. Just for this year alone. And it doesn't count the pickup videos. Okay, from time that I do from time to time, um, and I got hundreds of videos after that in the works for the following years. So if you like vintage computers and you like um, repairs and recaps, and you like uh, seeing vintage software, computer software in their original boxes, and you like seeing vintage computer game playthroughs and and I do reviews on modern hardware or whatever. If you like stuff like that, you're going to love this channel. So if you haven't subscribed yet, maybe you should. Okay? I think you're really going to love my channel. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, stay tuned for more exciting content coming up real soon. Uh, my name is Hans George Campbell, and until next time...